Welcome to Bible study with the Elkins Park Presbyterian Church. Each week we provide an opportunity to begin our Bible study online with these weekly videos where I will read scripture and begin to offer some debriefing or reflections on that scripture passage. We then gather in person on the following Sunday morning at 9.30 a.m. on Sunday in our church library for a more interactive discussion of the same passage of scripture. So as we turn to our reading for today, I want you to know that it will be discussed on Sunday, June 16th, 2024. As we open the Bible, let us pray. Almighty God, we thank you for the gift of scripture. Today, as we read in the gospel lesson about healing, about the powerful way that Jesus worked to bring wholeness and peace to each individual he encountered, guide us today as we pray for healing and comfort for our own bodies and souls and minds and communities so that we may know your direct intervention and feel your healing spirit among us. We ask this all in the name of Christ. Amen. Hear these words from the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 4, verses 23 through 25. Jesus went throughout Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and healing every disease and sickness among the people. News about him spread all over Syria, and people brought Jesus all who were ill with various diseases, those suffering severe pain, the demon-possessed, those having seizures, and the paralyzed, and Jesus healed them. Large crowds from Galilee, the Decapolis, Jerusalem, Judea, and the region across the Jordan followed him. So this passage is about healing. We as Christians teach and profess that Jesus Christ, among the many miracles he has performed, he is a healer. He preaches and teaches. He's a prophet. He is able to do amazing, miraculous things, including raising individuals from the dead. Yet often we question as modern Christians living in this world filled with pain and suffering and physical ailments and injuries, why isn't Jesus healing us now? Why isn't every single person who encounters the Lord healed? I have discussed with our congregation here in Elkins Park several times that in scripture, when a story of healing is shared, it's sharing to teach a lesson. It's not the healing in and of itself that is actually the miraculous or profound or climactic event of the story. When Jesus calls Lazarus out of the tomb, the fact that Lazarus is alive is not really the miracle. The miracle in that account is that Jesus showed love, compassion, inclusion, and invitation to Lazarus and his sisters Mary and Martha, and that this publicly witnessed miracle testifies to who Jesus is. When Jesus heals the blind, restores mobility to the paralyzed, or even creates sanity when there appears to be insanity in an individual. It's not the healing act that so much is the focus of the account as it is the inclusion and welcome and love, grace and mercy that Jesus shows, that Jesus is willing to participate in the touching and caring for someone who is seen to be as unclean or unwanted due to their physical, mental, or spiritual disease. So here, as Jesus is traveling, there's a list of all the multitude of things that Jesus heals. It's basically saying Jesus healed anything and everything. The list is from physical ailments to things that you were chronically affil- afflicted with, things you may have been born with, things that were caused by injury, things that are both mental and spiritual illnesses as well as physical ailments. It's quite a list. And the people healed aren't named. The exact list of every illness healed is not listed. The story is presented as Jesus is encountering people from all over. It mentions Syria, which is basically saying 
everyone who wasn't Jewish. So foreigners, others, non-believers. Jesus is willing to offer his grace, mercy, and healing to anyone and everyone. But the encounters of healing aren't just healings of, in and of themselves. The encounters that result in healings are the proclamation of the good news. They're Jesus' way of ensuring that the world sees him, hears him, and understands him. And this passage from the gospel tells us that as a result of these healings, Jesus gained many followers. We tend to focus on those 12 inner circle followers, the disciples. But every time Jesus preached, taught, sat down in community at a table, at a meal, interacted with someone to tell stories and parables, or performed a healing, at every encounter, no matter what it was, the result throughout scripture is that Jesus gained more followers. So in addition to those he specifically singled out and called and said, follow me, who dropped everything to follow him, there are those others who simply hear him or see him and feel a stirring within their heart to follow, or those who are healed and in response faithfully want to show their allegiance to Jesus and the message of good news he brings. The good news he brings is the one that John the Baptist was preparing the world for and now realized in Jesus. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven has drawn near. It has drawn near in Jesus Christ. So the kingdom of heaven, these glimpses of the perfection that God offers, the goodness intended at creation before sin broke into the world, you are getting a taste or a glimpse of that through the ministry, life, witness, and healing of Jesus Christ. So of course you want to feel follow Jesus. Being close to Jesus means being closer to God. Being close to Jesus means having these glimpses of what heaven will be like. A foretaste of this heavenly kingdom. Experiencing a bit of the goodness that God created at the moment of creation and said, it is good. All of this has been lost and broken due to human sin and failure, due to turning away from God towards our own selfish desires. And now when we repent, turning away from sin and back towards God, we get to experience some of that eternal glory in the here and now. That is why we live our faith now on this side of the grave, knowing that someday we will fully embrace our identity as a child of God forever in the embrace and presence of our Creator. But until then, through these healings and through preaching, and through prophetic witness, and through community fellowship, and through forgiveness, grace, mercy, worship, acts of obedience to God. All of these are giving us a glimpse, a little foretaste of the kingdom, giving us an opportunity to experience what it will be like when we fully are in the presence of God forever. And that's what invites people to want to know more, to follow Jesus, and to celebrate what he's doing, whether it be healing, teaching, sitting at table, putting children on his lap, touching women, touching the unclean, being with the unwanted like tax collectors and sinners. All of these are showing us what God intended at the moment of creation before sin broke it all. Thank you for beginning this conversation with me in this video. I hope you continue the conversation with me this coming Sunday at 9.30 a.m. We then worship at 10.30 here at the Elkins Park Presbyterian Church. Our worship service is recorded and later broadcast online. We gather throughout the week, online and in person, for multiple opportunities for study, mission, and fellowship, and we would love to have you learn more about our ministry. You can find out more on our website, eppchurch.org, or give us a call, 215-887-2544. Thank you, and I hope to see you next time.